My mom won't stop yelling at me to the point it affects my relationship with others. My mom is a single parent, and I absolutely understand that it's difficult. But I honestly think she yells at me way more than she should. I'm a pretty good kid, I get food and I bring some for her. I'm independent, I don't ask her for money, instead I work for my own money. I never ask for help, and don't ask her to buy me unnecessary things. I work on my grades to my best potential, yet no matter what she yells at me, and it's really downgrading me thinking I'm just not good enough. Not once had she said she was proud of me, all she does is yell at me for everything. My friend came over the other day, we ordered pizza, my money, and I ordered it large enough for her and I to share and a couple pieces for my mom. The next thing I know, she's yelling at me for a dumb pizza that it isn't big enough to share in front of my friend. My friend then texted me the day after saying she doesn't want to come over anymore due to my mom constantly yelling at me. Even when I'm on a call with friends and she knows that I'm on a call with them she likes to yell at me for absolutely anything she can find. And it's embarrassing obviously. Even talk to my mom about it, asking her what have I done wrong and why is she always yelling at me, I brought it up so many times and she just scoffs and leaves it at that. I told her yesterday that my friends don't want to come over anymore and she says yeah cause you can't keep any friends and it just hurt. That the reason they don't want to come over is cause of her and not me. And she cussing me out about it. How do I seriously get her to stop yelling at me for every little thing? It's so tiring and I've talked to her about it countless times and even a school counselor and nothing helps. Please someone? One thing I can tell you for sure is that she's completely in the wrong. You seem to be doing everything right, and the whole can't keep friends thing is complete bullshit so don't let that get to you. Not much you can do on your own. Seek help from your school or reach out to a family member and explain the situation. If you let this continue, it could really psychologically affect you for years to come. Maybe she's envious of you in some weird way and is trying to mess up your life or something. I don't know. All I know is she probably won't listen to you or take you seriously. The thing is, I have reached out to a family member and they have even talked about it to her and yet she still hasn't changed or even acknowledged what they have said. If you've expressed your feelings with her and that's how she responds, the best thing for you to do is get your schooling finished, save as much of your income as possible, and move out at your earliest convenience. This is a toxic and abusive relationship that will not likely change, even once you've moved out. She has power over you right now as a parent and as the, presumed, homeowner, and she's taking advantage of that power by berating you with verbal abuse. Get out. And remember? She is painting a false narrative. Build an emotional wall now. Do not let her reduce your self-worth or distort the truth. She is trying to tear you down and she won't stop trying. Don't let her change you. Maintain civility. Get out ASAP. Best not to tell her your plans to leave. She will try to sabotage them. Good luck. I'm so sorry, she's using you as an emotional punching bag not because you've done anything wrong. This is emotional abuse. And it's likely she knows this behavior isolates you from your friends. If you've brought this up to her and she's made no effort to change, it's likely she never will. I would make a long-term plan to get out of there while preserving your mental health as much as possible. The sub slash r slash raised by narcissists might be a good support network. Spending as much time as you can away from your house working, with friends or volunteering can give you a break. And try to routinely talk to your guidance counselor, both to have some mental health support and to plan for the future. Whether you go to college or get a job after graduating, you will want to be living away from home. Save your pennies, learn how to be independent, slash r slash frugal has great tips on cooking cheaply, and look for the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm so sorry. Verbal abuse is abuse, and you are being abused by a child abuser. This is the long and the short of it, and I'm surprised at the number of commenters here who seem to be brushing by that point. There really is no minimizing this, this is child abuse. Your friends, quite rightly, don't want to be around a child abuser and watch her abuse you. It's a difficult and sickening thing to watch. Please start using the word abuse when you are describing this to other adults. This is what this is, and you Using the word instead of shine around it is going to get
get them to start taking you more seriously. I'm so sorry that this is happening to you. If you can, start recording when these things happen and keep a log of things like date and time. Backup videos and stuff to the cloud or a Google Drive or something, so even if she deletes them from your phone you'll still have a copy. Reach out to your teachers, your school counselor, other family members. Talk to the parents of your friends even, and consider asking them to call Child Protective Services for you. If you don't feel like you're able to call them yourself, you deserve to live a better life than this. My, 37M, family are trying to get me to move on when I'm not interested and even my ex, 37F, is involved. Three years ago my fiancé of nine years came out as a lesbian. It really fucked me up and I decided I was done with romance. It was very surprising. Since then, I've done what I need to do to enjoy life. I've invested in sex toys, hired escorts when I need to and largely done my own thing. But recently my family and friends have been trying to get me to meet people. Oh cute girl at my horse riding? I'll get your number for my cousin. Oh nice girl separated from her husband? Yes I know someone. That sort of thing. The past few months. My ex who did become a mate the past year after a while started a new job tried to get me a girlfriend. She had a woman, 40F, who she thought I would like at her place show interest in a blind date. So she gave me her details, the woman mine and told me to ask the woman out. I was like nah, thank you but I'm done. I'm not interested. When my ex asked me why I'm not interested, I said I wasn't after being in love with someone who hurt me. My ex tried to give me real talk and said I'd never be with her again and that I need to move on and that she's a lesbian now. But I'm just not interested. I told her to just leave me alone. Since then, even my mum's tried to get me to move on. So how can I get them to leave me alone? That I don't want anyone else. Edited to take out mention of ex-wife because it confused people. Funny that you say, when my ex asked me why I'm not interested, I said I wasn't after being in love with someone who hurt me. And she replies with, my ex tried to give me real talk and said I'd never be with her again and that I need to move on. Why haven't you deleted her from your life? So how can I get them to leave me alone? That I don't want anyone else? See me comment above. And you're only 37, it'll come with time. Or not, doesn't matter. If you're happy, you're happy. I was cheated on by my ex. I tried moving on but the hurt is too great that I decided to not fill that void with people. Oh mom means well but it's your choice and if and when you're ready, you'll meet someone. So how do I get them to leave me alone? Put them in time out. Meaning, if they try setting you up or matchmaking, cut all contact for a period of time. Nothing extreme. If you normally see them twice a week, no contact for two weeks. If they persist, time limits go up. Ignore texts, calls, take a break fears on social media, the works. If your mom calls and asks why you're not responding to your ex, tell them explicitly that they're on time out. And be explicit about what that means. Childish? Oh, absolutely serious. Stand your ground with boundaries and respect. First off, your ex needs to realize that she's not the sun and the world does not revolve around her. Your dating life has absolutely nothing to do with her. She decided to cut herself out of that, and that's all. She doesn't get to dictate where you should be romantically, and she most certainly doesn't get to give you crap anytime she oversteps. Oh, I'd have the real talk with her, and tell her flat out that you're setting a boundary and she needs to either respect it or be out of your life. Tell her that you really don't want to hear about how she thinks you're still hoping for her again, or just like before, it's the boot. She needs to know that she has no right to disrespect you just because you were together once. Now, your family. They don't get to dictate either. I'd actually impose the same boundaries. Yeah, like, damn, girl, don't be so arrogant? Question mark. I'm really sorry. People who do this usually do so because they are trying to be helpful. They assume that no one can really be happy on their own. 
usually because it would be impossible for them, so they ignore your protests and try to hook you up anyhow. Draw and enforce stern boundaries. I am happy alone. I have asked you not to set me up anymore. I am not interested. Why do you continue to disrespect my wishes? Just walk away from anybody who tries to lecture you about moving on. How condescending. My, 23F, boyfriend, 24M, is hell-bent on telling children the truth about Santa Claus. You might get to the end of this and think it's a big deal over nothing, but it's really upsetting me and I just want to get it out. I started dating my boyfriend at college. Obviously in that environment, there aren't many children around, nor are people likely to spend Christmas away from their families. That's what we did for the last three years, our families live at opposite ends of the country, so we never mixed for the holiday week. This year we both graduated and moved in together in our college city. Due to the world being how it is, we decided not to see either one of our families for Christmas, and are just spending it with each other. The issues started the other week when we were out shopping. There was a socially distanced Santa's grotto in the large store we were in, and when my boyfriend saw it, he exclaimed in a loud voice Santa isn't real, and looked at me like I should be laughing or praising him. I didn't, I was shocked and dragged him away before anyone could get to him, there were several angry parents waiting who were glaring at us. When we were outside, I asked him what the hell he was playing at, and he said that he's always hated the idea of Santa, and kids being lied to and manipulated into believing that some magical man bought all the presents for everyone in the world. I immediately asked if he'd had some traumatic experience with a Santa, like seeing someone part way through putting on the beard and hat, but he said no and that his parents always told him the truth. He's an only child, and no one in his family ever tried to play along with the Santa lie. This made me really sad. I loved Santa as a kid, and was lucky enough that I learned the truth about him slash tooth fairy slash Easter bunny organically when I was old enough, so couldn't quite believe that someone had grown up without that. I was also appalled at the shouting, and told him that it was childish and stupid, and he agreed not to do it again. I thought that would be the end of it, but no, the other day I was going to the mailbox, when someone who lives in our apartment block came up to me. She said that she wasn't sure if I knew, but that my boyfriend had basically ruined their Christmas. She explained that the day before, he'd been out for a run and had passed her and her son, aged about 5 or 6. On the way out, they'd chatted for a minute, but it was obvious that the son wanted to leave and go back inside because he was making cookies for Santa, yep, you guessed it, my boyfriend opened his mouth and told the kid the whole truth about the situation, right down to how if the kid looked around the apartment enough, he'd probably find that all the presents Santa was going to bring him were already there. That's exactly what happened, the mother couldn't really discipline the child because it wasn't his fault, and now a little kid has lost years of wonder because of my stupid boyfriend. I confronted him when I got back and all he could say was that he didn't think I'd be mad because he didn't shout. I told him straight up that any future children we might possibly have had a right to be children, which includes being allowed to believe in Santa. He said that it would never happen. We're now not talking. I can't possibly comprehend breaking up over this, but it seems like an immovable ampass. Am I being too stubborn? Is Santa really that important? Too long didn't read, Boyfriend wasn't brought up to believe in Santa Claus and thinks it's manipulative to let children believe in him, will happily tell children the truth, and leave parents to deal with the fallout. Is this really what is going to end my relationship?